and welcome back ladies and gentles i am in darwin right now in the northern territory in australia not to be a dick or anything but let me tell you the city in darwin is really not a big of a deal it's like just a big suburban area and if it's not a suburban area then it's just warehouses and yards and industrial facilities so i'm just gonna go to litchfield check out litchfield hopefully sing some crocodiles the eight i think one, two, three, four. Darwin gets its name from Captain John Stokes. He was the captain of the Beagle. And you might be wondering, well, if his name's John Stokes, how do we get Darwin? He discovered Darwin Harbour in 1839 and named it Darwin Harbour after his good friend, Charles Darwin. However, Charles Darwin never actually visited here. But if you ask me, it's a little bit rude. We are on the way. So first we're gonna do the jumping truck tour. I'm gonna drive it here in Eaton. Okay. Drive a tour guide, five car, guardian, avenger, all in one person. If we die, it's on him. <laughs> Exciting. Bro. We got a buffalo in front of us, guys. Look at the car before he's running on the street. Check that. Holy shit. Right, we're here for the jumping croc tour. Hopefully, we're gonna see a lot of jumping crocs, right? Gonna be fun. Yeah, Alright, off we go. No matter what happens on this boat, stay in the boat. I don't care if it catches fire, we've got a fire extinguisher. Stay in the boat. Uh, people in the front rows, that is the row closest to the railings. You guys have to remain seated at all times, all right? We're bringing the crocodiles as close to you as safely possible. Things like leaning over the railings makes you go too close. And it usually results in a lot of paperwork for me and Kim, okay? Fun one of it, guys. Yeah, you got a seat there, mate. That's the way. And we'll bring him back around here in a tick. You know, if he, if, if he could, he'd eat a wallaby every couple of days. But um, catching a wallaby isn't as easy as you might think. They are a very, very temperature. Saltwater crocodiles cannot. People call them cold blooded. I wouldn't call them cold blooded, not by a long shot. I wouldn't call them cold blooded is because the best running temperature, the optimum running temperature for a saltwater crocodile is between 28 and 80 gallons. In about half an hour, you're going to have sweat running down and crack your ass like that. Right? Oh, big fella, big fella, what's this? Oh. Real, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We woke him up, folks, we woke him up. Yeah. Yeah, Just there you go. There you go, there you go. That's it. Oh, beautiful. There would be eight metre long crocodiles out here in this river. He was um, caught in the Philippines, okay? This previous one was a bit lazy and quite old. That's a 60 years plus or something. That's the next one. Hey Cam, we'll sweep it all safety. Yeah. But <laughs> half a million soldiers, we currently have about a I've been a bit lazy. <laughs> I'm really jumping that much. We are already on the road to Litchfield. See some sick waterfalls, waterfalls, fresh water pools. Road train, road train. <laughs> Made it to Litchfield. You can already see a lot of these huge termite hills. Do you know how how long it takes to build on these for termites? Like, is it a slow process? It is. So the cathedral termites grow about one meter every 10 years. So some of these will be 60, 70 years old. 60 to 70 years old termite hills. It's f***ing crazy, man. Yo, look at this. That's all made by termites and they are right over there. Quite impressing. The workers are the ones that actually build the mound itself and they will also go out and gather food. 
for these guys, these are grass eaters. They only travel at night and that is because they're very sensitive to the sun and they will die if they come out. So during the day, they are storing the food and building the mound. At night, they come out and gather the food. You've got the soldiers. The soldiers do not attack, they only defend. They're very passive. They just defend the mound from intruders like ants. So yeah, what I just said before, I'm stupid. <laughs> they're, they're ants. And they are like the biggest enemies of termites. And this one, this termite hill, it's, it's dead. So that's why it's full of ants right now. They're just invading it. Oh, flies. Well, here's another big one. Ooh la la. Perspective how big it is. Look how small these people are compared to the termite thing. All right, this area is fucking sick. We are at Bewley's Ruffle. And this is just spectacular. This is, this is beautiful. I should take a dip. Yeah, let's have a swim. Holy sh check this out. Yo, it's fucking cool, man. That's fing life, man. That's Bewley's Rock Hole, perfect fucking swimming spot if the crocs are not around. Must visit place, must visit. <laughs> Bewley's Rock Hole was something very special. For me. It was awesome. But now it's time to uh, see something even cooler, which is the Florence Falls. Beautiful waterfall. Get out of here. Oh my god. Yo. Yeah, we gotta go down. We gotta go down there. There's a bit of a way down. At least we don't have to climb down some f***ing hill or something. There's like a proper way down. Oh, poster! Gonna be good! Uh, that's so cool, man. Have a bit of a dip in there. Very low crocodile risk. Which is still at zero, so... That was something that I'm not gonna do. Fuck that, bro. This is honestly the way to do it. Look at this. How cool is that? This is the Florence. Florence Paul? Florence Paul. That's where we are right now. Yeah. Beautiful, man. <laughs> that was four and four. Amazing. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Fucking beautiful. That's why you need to travel. That's why you need to go to places, you know, because you're gonna see shit like this. Makes me so happy. It's still beautiful. But, you know, uh, I'm not gonna go swim right now. I feel like I've swim enough. A couple hours passed and I'm back in Garvin because my phone battery died and my power bank also died so that's just great tomorrow i set up so see you tomorrow <laughs>